which has just been sat around for a while that somebody could buy if they want. But uh, yeah, Roland Cloud is one of those things that I have a lot of happiness with because the memories are there and uh, big into Roland sounds. I still have a Roland X, uh, Phantom, by the way, Phantom XR, which uh, it's hard to use these days purely because Logic does not do very well interfacing with these things, but it's okay. Let's start, once I stop this, whee, there we go. Let's start with some D50, I thought, and we just kind of go from there because the D50 is a very interesting beast. And uh, as always, favorites only, because otherwise we'd be here all year. There are, I don't know how many thousands of sounds in Roland Cloud, like 18,000 odd, probably more between all the synths I have installed. And as usual, we're running these in complete control. So this first sound from the D50 is 12 string guitar. And yes, Aftertouch does do that. Which I find uh, quite amusing, I'll be honest. Arthur, the man himself. It's a bit early for you, isn't it, mate? I mean, goodness gracious. Talk about uh, up early. So that's the first sound in D50. It's not my favorite, but there are some fantastic sounds coming up, like this synth sound called Back to Mono. I love that. It's just so funky. It's going to be great when I use that on stage. I have not used this on stage yet, but I'm going to. The next sound is also fantastic. It's called Ballad Piano Choir, and it's just beautiful. really nice it's just so pretty it's got a fantastic bottom end as well take it down an octave i love it it's great all right move on to um Big waves. Ah, oh, half he's up late Saturday evening. I see, I see, I see. That explains a lot. Right. Christmas time. I was checking that my mic ducker is supposed to be working. So if I talk, play, it does cut me out. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to. But the big waves, maybe it was just below the threshold, so it was not doing it. Um, after you should message Andrew, get him in, because I know he's awake at this time of the day. Um, I forgot to message him on WhatsApp beforehand. But uh, he, I'm sure <laughs> he's got Roland Cloud, but I'm sure he'd like to hear what my take on it is, because he's cool like that. This sounds a, just a lovely sound. It's just very bell-like. And, you know, the D50, when it came out, surprises me just how very very tasteful the reverb in it is how tasteful the sounds are you know they're not real sounding 
Hardly any of them are real sounding, but they're great for the time period. You drop it down an octave, it starts to get silly. Lots of aliasing. But here, in the middle, it's quite nice. Yeah, I like that. All right then, Cosmo Voices. Pitchbin goes all the way down, whole octave. Or it does something weird, actually. I think there's a lot of strange stuff going on behind the scenes. Oh, Aftertouch does strange things too. That's very much like a strange Korg sound, actually. <laughs> How bizarre. Digital native dance. That one key, or one key will do a lot. Let's hold one key. It did that fading back in thing. I did not. It did that by itself. Yeah. Fantasia, of course. One of the best sounds in history, as far as I'm concerned. And nothing else quite gets it right. Everything tries. A lot of things try. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Every time I have a live stream, I forget I can put the keyboard down because I don't actually need it in front of me every single time. Without fail, I fail to remember. Fantastic low end. Yes, aftertouch does indeed do something here. I mean, if you ask me, the D50 is worth it for just that sound alone. Never mind anything else. Just that sound is worth it. Okay. Flute Piano Duro. Why am I tempted to? Yes, it, it happened. I, I, I make no apologies for that. We had to canyon on that sound because it just seemed very fitting. I mean, what can I say? Flutes Ensemble. Now, I don't know about you, it's not very fluty. It's a great, great sound. It's a fantastic sort of synth brass sound more than anything. Um, 
Again, after touch. Lovely. That is, a, again, a fantastic onstage sound because <laughs> never mind it not being a flute sound. It's great if you want to do brass kind of chords and stabs. Absolutely love it. Ooh, like that. Funky cutting. Okay, so the left hand Pitch bend works for the left hand, but not the right. And so does sustain. That's a very strange way around of doing it. I wouldn't have done it that way. It, this is like um, a glorified mod file, because you've got stuff on the left and stuff on the right and reverb. Now, mod files don't normally have reverb, depending on what you're playing them through. Uh, but under normal circumstances, no. I kind of like it though. It's cute. It's pointless, but it's cute. <laughs> Good vibrations. Yeah. And Arfie says, this is the life sitting on friend's couch, typing via the Bluetooth keyboard on your phone. Why not? Yeah. sound i mean i know i say that every single time we do one of these because it's in my favorites but it, it, i do like it grand canyon That's really weird, but cool. Koto bamboo flute. Narumble, but I'm not 100% sure. Marumble, marimble, marumble, strange.
passing sky. Ooh. Yeah, it does seem that Modwheel, um, actually Pitch Bend and After Touch do things here. That's After Touch when I press in. And pitch Bend. I think that's a great sound for an 80s keyboard, really. <laughs> PCME piano. This does not run in contact, uh, Letitia. This is running in native. It's running in complete control, but not contact. Um, the Roland plugins are their own thing. Uh, nothing to do with contact at all. But it does run inside of complete control with third-party NKS presets. Perk E-Piano. <laughs> piano Now, Arfi, if you are still listening, does this or does this not remind you very strongly, because it does me, of the Korg X5DR GM Piano? The second one. No, the first one. The, the second one is FM based, isn't it? This this is the first one. It's lovely. That's really cool. I like that. Haven't I played that more often? Why? Reluctant E piano. <laughs> with key release on an 80s keyboard. Wow. Goodness. I am impressed. Haven't played these in a while, so uh, yeah. Soft EP Center. I have in the works behind me that you can't see a Native Instruments Complete Control S61 Mark III with poly after touch, and I can't wait to test that out with all these sounds. <clears throat> it's not ready for prime time yet in terms of my usability, but it's in the house ready for when it is. So that'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to having a mess with that. Right, what's this? Star P's Chorus? I don't know what that means.
were delaying all sorts on that. Very nice. Thoughts. Just called thoughts. One word. Absolutely stunning, stunning sound. Wow. I don't know what to say about that other than hell yeah. <laughs> Vibe and clarinet. Okay. Yes, I get into 32 vibes as well, Alfie, every time I play these sounds. Alfie said they remind me of the old Roland MT32. Yeah, absolutely. Could not agree more. Wonder Drops. Well, I found the next sound for my, um, like, next UI project. If I do UI sounds for a project, this has to be in there somewhere. It's so good. It's just, oh, man. That's the end of the D50. Or, or my favourites, anyway. Right, let's go on to the JD800. There are so many sounds in here that's just funny. Right. So, look. <laughs> we have to start with this AC piano. Which, for all its sins, is not a bad sound, believe it or not. I know it's hard to think. Because if you've ever played with the Roland SC55, or if you've ever, ever had the misfortune to use the inbuilt GM synth in Windows, you will hear this piano all over the place. Uh. The SE55 version of this is not a patch on the 800, the JD800 version. There's something very, like, I wouldn't go out of my way to play it at a gig or anything, but it's a good sound for what it is. The 55 cut-down version is plastic in comparison, in the way that most of the D50 knockoffs are plastic in comparison. And as we've just heard, the D50 has a lot to offer, and a hell of a lot more besides that I didn't get to. But the D50 and the JD800 Roland Cloud have done a good job with, I would say, emulating these things closely and with great attention to detail. And I think this JD800 piano... You know, it, it's never going to be a fantastic piano. But it's okay. It's a funny thing. Right, right, right. Another world. This one is cool. I think, for me, I've never played a JD800 in real life, but this module, for its time, I think it was 91 or 92, after you can confirm that, is very interesting. Like the D50, I feel like it was quite ahead of its time. It had some great stuff in there. Aurora Borealis.
That is an Arfi sound. Whether you know that or not. That's the kind of sound I think Arfi would sit and play for an hour and not get bored. I mean, I too also could sit and play that for an hour and not get bored. It's rhythmical and you just play it to the rhythm of the other sound. It's great. Right. Bruised tines. <laughs> Clips a bit if I hit too hard, so I'll be careful. I suppose that's why it's called Bruise Tines. <laughs> Crystal EPs. Beautiful this. After touch. Again, this is one of those forever sounds. I mentioned one of these at least once in the stream. A forever sound for me is something that I could play forever. Lovely. Have a friend, Alexander, that loves that sound to bits. And quite rightly so. Deep breath pad. Kasana, you're not wrong. It's an 80s pop Saturday type sound. May include cheese, lots of cheese, grated cheese, sliced cheese, Parmesan cheese, the smelly cheese that you can find everywhere, brie. It scares people. But man, oh man. Yep. Drifting. Another forever sound. You know the type by now. If you've seen any of these things, then yeah, a lot of good stuff here. Fantasia 90s. So my problem with this sound is it's trying to capitalize on the original Fantasia, and it doesn't. It shouldn't have been called that. It should have just been called, I don't know, Future Fish or something. Nothing to do with Fantasia. That is a sound unto itself, and trying to capitalize on it doesn't work, even from the same company. It's a great sound in itself, right? But the Fantasia name does not do it justice. <laughs> Yeah. 
Weird. Fusion solo. <laughs> Rich got a nice delay too. I think Roland were quite good at delay and reverb in the 90s and uh, 80s as well. The D50 is proof of that. Harlequin. Sound sounds like it needs to be like that. It's cool. Hybrid strings. You wish they had Phantom X sounds in technology, says Mitchell. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly. I have the Phantom X V, uh, the X, sorry, Phantom XR here, and I want those sounds in technology. And I really, really hope one day they will appear because, damn it, that thing came out in 2004. It's now time to give them to us. It's 20 years this year. So maybe on the 20th anniversary of the Phantom XR's release, we will get a brand new massive bank of sounds in technology, and I will jump up and down and shout and scream with excitement. I've wanted those sounds forever. Give me them. Iceman. What a fantastic noise. Yeah. Laser bass. I didn't realize it was one of funny, but it is. <laughs> Mr. Brass, what are you going to do me? Yes, indeed. Uh, as you were. Right, next. Um, Mr. JD. Mystic JD.
I might sell you my Phantom XR, Mitchell, if you want one. Mine is absolutely maxed out. Six SRX boards in there, five 12 meg of RAM, a gig PCI card. That works. It's big. And the only reason I would be selling it is because I just can't make full use of it in the way that I would like to. It's not because I don't like it. I love it. Absolutely love it. By the way, if you're curious, the boards I've got in there are SRX1 drums, three studio, five the dance board, six the orchestral board, seven the keys uh, and bass board, or what's it called, bass and keys, um, which has more than the SRX on the Roland Cloud does, and nine the world board. I have those six boards in there, and each and every one of them is fantastically cool. And SRX1 will never appear on Roland's on Roland Cloud, as far as I'm aware, because um, those sounds were licensed from Spectrosonics and Ilio Entertainment, and I don't think Roland have the license for them anymore. So when you buy SRX1, you're kind of buying a collector's item, because, yeah, you can't get those in software at all. I mean, literally at all. It's not possible. So it's a lovely bit of kit. News stack or news stack? I'm not sure what it says there. Right, Perk Vox Stack. Planet Rings. Ooh, what's Planet Rings? I would like to lay my hands on a JD800 one of these days to know what it feels like and what the control panel is like and all that, because I don't know. Pulse pad. Scanner synth. What I really wonder is how many of these sounds are actually poly after touch capable. And I won't know that until I get the other keyboard and stick it on the stand and can browse through some noises here. But it does make me curious. <laughs> Spun glass. Well, Mitchell, the thing about Synology, especially for a lot of the Roland, uh, the, sorry, the XV sounds is and the SRX sounds, they don't have reverb, so they don't come across properly. And some of the effects that were in the XV don't make it across to Synology properly. And that's an issue. Very bad. 
Roland Cloud says, Adrian, yes, it is a subscription. So you subscribe to it on a monthly or yearly basis. I pay about £208 a year for it. I think it's roughly about that, 200 and something pounds a year. But for me, just like Dropbox, it's a must-have because I'm a big Roland fanboy. <laughs> so I need them in my life. That's swell strings, by the way. I didn't say. It's lovely. Really nice. Right. Synth pipe solo? By the way, I really don't like these sort of things, but if you like the stuff you're hearing, do subscribe because, or become a channel member if you want to. It gives a little bit of pee in my pocket. And then I can buy more libraries and uh, it helps keep the stream alive. Synth wave pad. The dream. That's a 90s sound. That is amazing. And uh, Michelle, yes, the Protest Library does have a contact library available. I bought it years ago. It's called DSF Sound Factory um, Emu Proteus. And it's $99, I believe. It's pretty good. Velo Crunch. <laughs> PH <laughs> Voco Street Wet base. That is so fat with the pH again. It's got a huge wide chorus on it. It's just big and wow, wobble split. Ugh. 
cow, cow. So that's the end of that one, and we move on to. I'm skipping a few because some of them don't work well at all. So let's move. How many sounds are in here? Let's move to SRX dance tracks. Some of these start to cause weird issues. So. All right, yeah, so let's move to SRX dance tracks, and we start off with this 1978 one. 116 BPM, but it's set to 120, so it's a bit out. <laughs> that is what that does. Yeah, the SRX boards don't work very well in this mode. And so if they keep clicking like that, I'll move on to XV, which is also not 100% perfect. And if it still does it, I'll use the Xenology versions. I have different favorites um, on the main SRX boards themselves versus Xenology. And now it won't do it exactly correctly, but it will be okay, but yeah. yeah. Acid Riff 125. Yeah, this keyboard split into into different zones. Okay, <clears throat> they all play the exact same note, but they're split somewhere. So that's different from what it was before. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So yeah, all right. Yeah, these aren't optimized very well, and you can hear clicking in the audio. It's very irritating to me. So now there's tons and tons of beats, and how many copyright strikes will I get for some of these because they're in other people's music? So I will be careful to... Uh... So there's loads of sounds in there, loads of fantastic beats that I'd be surprised if a lot of people didn't recognize. And there's Beat Menu 2 as well. There are so many. There's some fantastic beats in amongst all this. Like, literally, fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah. A lot of, lot of great stuff in there. And um, I'd be surprised if this one doesn't come up, cause me some issues. Beat Menu 3. And they put some of the same in the again, okay. Beat menu four. I love these, these percussion loops are so good.
<laughs> wanna wanna wanna. Break beats kit. Okay, this one's actually a drum kit, so I can actually play the thing as opposed to worrying about beats. This does not translate, by the way, to Xenology. I'm playing the real thing, so it's different, but the Xenology version of this is bad. Bad business. Very bad. Not good. So, of course, there's lots of different drums in here. There's a whole other kit next to it. You can play two kits at once. Ah, guitar riffs. Fun. And the Roland Old School Metronome. Why not? So I could pretend to be playing a beat while recording it myself with a metronome. <laughs> Can I? I can't do that. That takes some really weird coordination. Nope. Damn it. <laughs> cool EP2. This is all right. I'm really upset for Roland for not optimizing these things properly. Like, there's no reason for this behavior. It's not. It's 2024, guys. Fix your crap. It's not my computer. My computer is very powerful. It's an M1 Max, like it, 64 gigs of RAM, um, a very sick CPU. This is just Roland because I have loads of other plugins that do not do this. Loads. It's very bad. Clicking everywhere, honestly. Dance vibes. That's a fantastic noise. I like it. This sound, by the way, can also be found in SRX5, which is not the same as this one. Um, this is SRX Dance Tracks, which is SRX8, really, uh, which really is kind of called Platinum Tracks, unless the Roland Cloud version is a mixture of the two, because sometimes I think I come across sounds that I thought were on the other one, so that is a possibility. But yeah, Deep Forest. stab menu <laughs> oh dear lord yeah i think i would have uh, found many many copyright strikes but hopefully fair use is um is a thing we have another kit which is house kit 2 Lots of nice choices of bass drum. Another kit next to it again before, like the last time. Mix at 90. I love this one. Yes, the pitch bend goes all the way up there. Why? I don't know, but it does. Silly. 
Silly. Okay. Mellow Trem SRX. See, I can't use these on stage because of the clicking. I am not having that sound on stage, no way. I'll show them to you today because I know that you'll forgive me because it's a live stream and these things happen, but I'm very annoyed at Roland. Mon 90, why do I pay for Roland Cloud if they treat me like that? Very silly. Motivation. Now, I'm pretty sure that that kind of sound came from SRX5 as well. Because I have that on the Phantom. I have that sound on the Phantom. So, uh, yeah. Perk menu. That one. I always thought it sounded like somebody knocking their head on a computer screen of old, like a CRT. It's funny. Pump. Pump up. And if anyone ever used the old chicken nugget client, I used this sound uh, like that as a retweet sound back in the day. Just that. <laughs> Random beat. Can't really play that for too long, I'm sure, because somebody will get pissy. But yeah, what a joy. <laughs> Snare one menu. <laughs> snares everywhere. It's tons of them. If you wanted snares, oh, there's a place to go. Square Bell 2. <laughs> I'm taken back to my um, 2012, no, wrong, my 2007 PC when I used to run hypersonic. And uh, certain sounds in hypersonic would cause the, the ASIO driver to behave just like this. But it's 2024 now, and my computer is much better, and it still behaves like this. It's very bad. STRCHDS menu. String chords menu? <laughs> But cool, I like that. STR scale major. Okay then. TV drama, yes, I love this one. Stop crackling, you sod. Okay. Vox menu. Uh. One, two, three, four. Yeah. I always find that funny. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Ow! Well, yeah. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That one is everywhere. Say yeah! Without the crackle? Say yeah! Thank you. Scream! Not today. Baby. Yesterday. Get on up. Tomorrow. MC. Give it up. Oh, yeah. Get off. Get up. And get on. Get on. Dance. Do it. Jam. House music. Come on. Tick tack. Tickety tack tack. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the tick tack, tickety tack tack thing. It's very funny. You put that to a beat, you can just twist it around and do silly things. Oh, yes. Well, exactly. All right, all right. It's my house. Oh, yeah. That's a long sample for an old uh, uh, 90s piece of kit. Kit, kit, gear. Kit, gear, okay. Everybody. 
So who's the singer in all these? I do not know. So that's Vox Menu, and that's the end of this particular SRX board. So we move on to electric piano, and I hope that it will behave. <laughs> Oh God. Chorus EP2. I love this EP, by the way. This is something I have used on stage before. And uh, this is a board that I didn't own when I owned my Phantom XR. Well, I still own my Phantom XR. It was SRX12 on the Phantom side. Um, these don't have numbers, they just have names. a lovely SRX, um, sorry, a lovely piano. And I'm surprised that I didn't own that in hardware knowing my love for Rhodes pianos, but I didn't at the time. So yeah, dual whirly. EP1 something, warm pad? No, warm pad, warm pad, well pad. There's nothing wrong with your stream, by the way. It's my computer, or rather Roland being bad. So nothing to do with me. EP1 WVox. Now, luckily, these sounds do sound fine in Xenology because they're not doing anything complicated with uh, weird effects that you cannot emulate. So the versions of these in Xenology are perfectly usable. And that's what I used when I used them on stage. I did not use this version on stage because, well, we know why. Melodic EP1. It's very annoying. Phaser EP1. Roland always were good at phases in my book. Love these phases. I really enjoy that sound. It's just fat. Really good. Pure EP1. Again, please. Again, please. Thank you. I believe I believe that Roland must not have any Mac testers. They're all Windows testers because I don't think these things happen on Windows. But uh, they really need to pull their finger out of their assholes and fix this shit. Very annoying. Pure EP2. Stereo Trem EP1, yeah. And 
the wah clav. <laughs> Fun. That's the last of that one. In that one. SRX keyboards. I think I've got a fair few in here. So I apologize for the clicking and cracking and all the bad things. So stupid. What can I do? Throws a bacon sandwich at me. Oh, I like that. Zoe, Zoe, yay. I'll have a bacon sandwich any day of the week. 80 ZP. This is nice. And uh, this is a board I do have in my Phantom. It's lovely. Sweet. Right, hello, hello. All offany. It's kind of annoying because it just locks up and um, doesn't work. Well, how rude. I have a stuck note and it's gone weird. How polite. Ooh, that's joyful, isn't it? Look, I can't play the keyboard at all. It's dead. It's absolutely dead. Okay. I have to switch away and can I then switch back? That was so random. Why did you do that? Oh, no. Oh, look, it's locked up. Oh, wow. Yeah, logic's gone uh, pissy, one might say. That's kind. Thanks a lot, logic. Uh, thanks for that. Well, in that case, one will have to force quit the old logic and turn up the other mic. Just so. There we go. Right, how about this? I press this button and press that button. And then I talk to you while I reload logic. It's one of those days. It's right, it's fine. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. First of all, it's important to... Actually, I'm going to try and reload the crash project to see what happens. Because I don't know if it's going to be bad or good or... In the meantime, in the between time, how are you all doing? I hope that you had a nice two weeks since last we saw each other. Auto saved. Right, reloading the track again. Proper rude, man. I blame Roland. Fix your damn products. Right. Can we get it to work? Hold on. Once I reset the vendor back up to be rolling. I've gone too far. Q. Ah, there we go. Right. Now, where were we? Favorites on. S R X keys. Rude. Yeah, we got them. What a stupid, stupid pile of moo. So let me try and move to this second sound and see if it crashes again. By the way, I rebooted just before the stream started because I'm sensible like that. But it doesn't seem to matter. Anyway. This is called B Higher, and it's a fantastic noise, except not in this configuration. I took a copy of this using Logic's auto sampler off of my Phantom and put it into Logic 
so I have this sound forevermore because I like it so much. I don't know why. And of course, on the, on the Phantom, it plays absolutely perfectly fine, so I don't care. But it's just an annoyance. Rajesh is back. Ah, this is a good one, if it will play nicely. It's called Believe. This one's nice. Quest. This is one of those sounds that's going to make the clickies happen. So if you're just joining me and you don't know what's happening, uh, Rolling Clouds, some of these products, are very bad for certain Mac CPUs. Mine is one of them. The sounds themselves are fantastic, but the clicky and cracky is to do with the audio system that Roland is using or something. I don't know exactly, but it's bad. But the sounds are great, so if you can put up with a little bit of annoyance... Lovely. Water noises, says Zoe. Yeah, all sorts of water noises. Dark shadow. So good. So good. Daz Limpet. It's like the B higher sound, but not the same thing. It's cool though. Drawn in pad. Oh, nice. Let's try an octave down for big meatiness. And I'm glad my uh, YouTube video came up as a recommendation on your YouTube feed. That's rather nice. Appreciate that. Thanks, YouTube. You're doing all right. Ethereal SRX. That's a sound. Sounds the clicky. That's a sound. <laughs> Flared trouser. It's very rich, isn't it? It's rich in tones, rich in reverb. Handle with care. Heaven Nylon. Oh, it's another one of these lovely guitar sounds.
All right. Housing base now. <clears throat> there are certain sounds in your lifetime that you find which can never be paralleled. And the thing is, it's not even a hard sound to remanufacture. But there is nothing else quite like this in the history of sounds that I have in my entire collection. And when I do use this sound, I use it from a Xenology because Xenology is kind of a copy of the SRX boards, but in a different format and they don't clicky like this. But this sound, is the basis of many of my earlier tracks. And there's nothing like it in the world that I found. I've even tried to recreate it. It's just not the same. So I, yeah. This is called Housey Bass and it's just, yeah, it's all right. Yep. Iceman. Ah, yep, another one. This 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 board is uh, really good for this kind of um, ethereal guitar-y stuff. This one's called In Peace. Great. If you hold a key down, it's all swirly and cool. So cool. Righty ho. Inspiration. Okay, so the module gives you a bit of tremolo there. Which is perfectly fine with me. JP Spirit. Yeah. So I've had writer's block for a long time and going through some of these sounds and, and in fact a lot of these live streams has given me the impetus to want to try and sit down and write things again but uh I just actually have to sit down and make myself do it. I think I, I'd like to say one of the streams I'll do is probably just like a writing um, stream where I just sit down and don't know what I'm going to start with and see what happens. Because I know that if I'm on camera, I will do a thing. If I'm alone, I may not ever get anything written because I can tell myself, ah, I can stop anytime. But on camera, I feel like I have to do something and therefore yeah, it would happen. JP8STR18X, something like that. That's a very weird title, and yeah. JP8STR1SRX, it's a long name. Meh. I'm trying to get the name of that, because that's a pretty weird thing. In. M-E-R, just M-E-R is the name of the preset, right? That's a great play forever sound as well. Um, I'll do it from SRX. Moody Nylon.
That's great. Ooh. The last synth had a kind of drinking cocktail on the beach vibe about it. Nylon pad. So this is called Obisoft's Pad SRX, I think. So it's kind of like an Obi. It's a very warm sound. Outer spaces. It's very spatial, yeah. Padded EP. Ah, oh, yeah, this one is lovely. Hey, Modwell brings up the pad, so it's filtered down. Road SRX. Oh no, so Pulse, sorry, Pulse LD, I suppose Pulse Lead. IP, that's what it's called. <laughs> Who are you getting rid of? Racy lead. My favorite sounds in this board. It's so warm and cozy. It takes me back to my, um, my, well, let me think. I think I got this sound when I was sort of 19. So yeah, my just end of teenage years, this, this board is, is full of nostalgia for me because I got, um, the, I got my XV 5050, which is a cheaper version of the 5080. And I want to say 2002, maybe even 2001, not hundred percent sure. Sure. No, it couldn't have been 2001, 2002. <laughs> I bought it with student loan money. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. But uh, yeah, I did. So. <laughs> Reflections, reflections, and it's um. It's cool, yeah. Residual SRX. This one is cool because if you play a chord and then let go, 
It kind of flibbles and flobbles off into, well, residuals. <laughs> wibbly wobbly timey wimey, exactly. And this was also wibbly wobbly timey wimey, RSX spinners. RSS spinners. Why is it RSS? I mean, RSS is like a weird feedy thing. Since when do you need a spinner for that? It's cool though. SH2 and 5 SQR. <laughs> Sign EP. Lovely stuff, that. Sign a solo SRX. Again, this is one of those sounds like the housing bass I mentioned earlier that I cannot find anywhere else. It does respond very well to aftertouch, as you may hear. It's deep and meaningful. Sylvanias, an organ. Yes. Spanish guitar. SRX. So stack heaven, I'm guessing staccato heaven or some kind of heaven. From the, I bet that's like a D50 knockoff. Yeah. Stage EP2. This is one I used a lot back in the day, many, many days ago, for many, many times. It's rich in tone, not in necessarily quality, but it's good for what it is. And the stereo piano is also not very good for what it is, but it's okay. It just, it's a thing. I've got better pianos to show you later on when we get to this analogy. So, suitcase EP. behaves very strangely this this particular EP. 
because it has it has very weird key release. I, it, it's all weird. Sweet stage piano. System 700 SRX. Yeah. Ah, oh, this ticker bass is another one I saved because this sound is kind of cool. Oh, touch flute, that's right, so after touch flute. Bell. Zoddy's gone to bed. Nice to have seen you here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yay. called like the co-op or something it's a really weird name that i can't pronounce but it's a solo sound and it's cool vp303 arpeggiator oh yeah so one note does that two notes three notes Four notes. It's quite fun. Yay. And that's the last one of those. Now, I'm going to skip the other SRX boards that I've got favorites for because I'm annoyed with them. And I'm going to try the XV5080 uh, and hope it doesn't crash. It didn't. But I know that this also exhibits some of the clicky behavior. So if it does it too much, I'll go straight to technology. Oh, it's doing it now. And um, then we will ignore doing it this way because it's annoying me <clears throat> it does take away some of the cool sound that it gives you which is really an annoying thing Roland screwed the pooch here and no one from Roland will watch this but if you do fix your crap seriously so this first sound that you heard was 101 bass So I had the um, the cheaper version of this sound module, the S uh, the sorry the XV fifty fifty, which had one less no, I think it had two fewer effects processors in it, and it had half the polyphony, <clears throat> and it was very easy to exhaust that polyphony by merely playing a few notes and a few other notes on another track. So it was very annoying to use, and it had the poorest MIDI clock of all the synths I think I've ever used in my life. You could exhaust it by having drums and piano and strings playing at once and it would kind of fall over and die hardcore 707 bass boy sorry 700 bass boy i'm very cross at this thing so i'm going to treat myself and you to xenology and what we'll do is we'll go to factory and start on the X350 bank itself because I am very annoyed at this whole deal. 
And hopefully, if I do that, it will stop being a complete tool. Right. Ah, oh, don't do that. Right. Let's see if we can't sort this business out, shall we? Because no one wants this, do we now? Okay, XV. Let's see. Are you going to crash? Nice. This knowledge takes ages to load. I don't know why. It takes ages and ages to load. Are you going to load? Come on. Okay, well, we have fixed one issue because the knowledge doesn't do the clicky clicky thing, so that's good. Um, subsequently, putting my keyboard back down because I think I'm safe for now, so I'm doing that. So let's talk XV patches for now from Xenology, and we'll talk about 2.2 bell pad or play from 2.2 bell pad. I have different favorites on the actual module versus the Xenology version of the module because they're not in sync and you can't make them in sync. You just have to go and do them one by one. So I missed a few and yeah. <laughs> All right, let us go and progress. 3D flange. So clippy, why are you so clippy? Naughty clippy. I'll be careful with you then. Bear, airplane. What do you notice about these sounds? No reverb. The original XV versions would have had reverb, but the original XV versions click and crackle, so it's kind of a trade-off. It's very annoying. Brass tubes. Silly, but it's fun. Brushing saw one. It's good, but uh, it needs to be faster, doesn't it? Civilization. One of the greatest patches in history. sound somewhere. It's great fun. Now, Crema. This is one of those sounds that responds very well to aftertouch and gets quite angry if you use it. It's a great synth sound. And uh, you have to basically BYOR, in this case, bring your own reverb. And I tend to use the Mverb, which is a free reverb plugin if I'm going to do that. Flying Walls. Hey, after that speeds it up. I don't think I knew that. That's cool. I feel like this was used in a TV show. It might have been Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or one of these quiz shows from back in the day, but I don't know what key they used.
Maybe one of you knows. Right. J. JV solo. <laughs> Little big horns. This is an interesting one because the mod wheel, the more the more you move it away from you, makes the horns go away so you can make them breathe. in a really not easy way to manage because of course your hands just stay on the keys. And it takes them away completely. But luckily I have a foot pedal which can do the same thing. So that's better. I don't know why they use the model to do that. Living in sync. This sound is on the XV5050, one of them, internal demos. And I heard that and I was just like, wow, this is incredible. Because it was the early 2000s and I'd never heard anything like it. Great. Mr. Mellow. Saws. Again, one of those iconic Roland synth sounds that uh, it's hard to replicate. Brilliant. Soaring square, soaring SQR. This one is great for stabby kind of solos. sink. A bit like its uh, predecessor. Um, this one is also good for the quick. Sweet Tines.
This is a very warm and thick sound at the bottom end. It's just full of beauty. Just checking the old uh, uh, warm vox piano. This is good, this. So while I play warm vox piano, I'll catch on the last two chat messages as well. Luke Nightingale, nice to see you. Hi, how are you doing? sound it's just fat and dumb yeah right that's the last of that particular bank of sounds i am going to go through some of the essential now which is um sonology stuff so let's see what we got we start with sixties e piano trim He's tech lead. <laughs> Not Sunday yet, boys and girls. Well, it's not here. It probably is in Australia or New Zealand. Air key two. Notice if I play softly, you only have a couple of the sounds. If you play harder, you get an extra one kicking. W2. It's 
It's alright, that. Analog Dream Attack. on that. Atmosphere Chorus, I think. That reminds me of a track I once did called Go On Then. And I don't remember the chords for this exactly. But it's that kind of a kind of an idea and it's just huge fat chords down here. The sound I used, because I had another module I completely forgot about, was the Adderall SD20. Sold that a long time ago. All right, so we're done with that particular A. Oh no, come back, come back. I broke things. Right, let's try that again. Okay, there are, there are essential drum sounds in here. They're not great. I don't really care for the drums within Xenology, by the way, um, because I know what Roland's capable of in the drum department, and these drums just do not cut it in my mind. But anyway, I will show you what there are, or what there is, or how you want to put it. So there's the hip hop kit. It's rubbish. right hand about there's nothing groundbreaking you know right then the next one orchestra kit see now I mean <laughs> dear Roland you have some of the greatest drum programmers and drums in hardware history, and you put these old SC88 drums in here, not to mention that there's no round robin, so you can do the machine gun effect. It's depressing. I mean, why did you do that? For the old school vibe? This is supposed to be your nice shiny flagship plugin, and this is what you give us. And the percussion doesn't have any layers or anything. Like, the Phantom stuff is better. The, the stuff in my Roland FA06 keyboard that I had in 2014, way better. Right, then you have Other Perk, Other Perk 2. What have we got in here? See, these are some of the sounds from the Phantom, so I know that it's capable of playing back multi-layer and good drum samples, but oh no, we just get shite. Oh, ha! Yeah. Come on, baby. Woo! A mix of old and new, mostly old. Roland are good at recycling. It's kind of annoying. 
SFX kit. Right, so these are going to be sounds from the SE55 original SFX. Yeah, the scream is not. The scream is newer, but it's not as good as the old one. It's a rubbish scream. The laugh is old school. It's the original SC55 laugh, admittedly. That's there. Silly. Just silly. And Luke wants to know who my inspirations are. My inspirations are... I don't know, actually. I mean, musically, I like Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock and Tingzek, who is a Swedish artist that everybody needs to check out yesterday. And uh, I like things like... Well, I've been working with a producer called Zero T. He's a drum bass artist. So that's been a very interesting two years of my life. And, uh, you know, it continues to be. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a weird it's a weird one. I don't really know who my inspirations are necessarily. A lot of people I listen to and like. But, yeah. This is a TR-707 and 727 kit. So these are all drums on purpose. And I get that. I accept that, but it just irritates me that this is what they do in the main. So that's the last of the drums anyway. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not that enamored with them. Let's go to A Factory. There's a lot of stuff in here that's not too bad. Okay, so let's have this first pop piano. It's called AC Pop Piano 1. <laughs> This piano, I think, is based on the Roland SRX-7 session piano, which is an old SRJB board initially. It's got that kind of session tone about it that I've known for years. Anyway, it's all right. What we got? AX Analog Dream. This is all right. <laughs> Again. Dino EP. Now, this is nice. So the model is giving some kind of tremolo. It's not bad. E grand. All right, this E grand is kind of nice because it's a bit bright. Aftertouch makes it brighter still.
Fantasia. See, we come a lot of these. Fantasia 2019. Nothing like the D50 Fantasia. Why? Just giving it a date. Just dates it already. Like, don't date it. Just don't. Okay. Uh, acoustic bass. Yeah. FMEP2. Yes, now this is a nice sound. This is one of those that is kind of um, responsive to uh, velocity. Oh, nice tremolo when you move the module. Very cool. I actually like that. Forgot about it. This one is called the Juresque Pad. Maybe. Oh, so below B, you have a low whistle in the left hand. And the mod wheel does that. Cool. Linear synth pad, cool. Smooth. Lost Paradise. There's an XV sound a bit like that too. Music box. Never heard a music box like that in my life, but never mind. Phase EP2. That 
That's really nice, actually. Yeah, I like that. one why take it down an entire octave for a bass it's dumb bring mod two Sure thing. Shine pad. I have to be very careful with that one because it's very hot. If I I'm playing it as soft as I can and it's still really loud. It might clip. So, step beat. Oh, this one is not synced. So, when you play normally a lot of these things, when you play the first note, everything else is synced to it. You can play separate and strum it. Don't know why you'd want to, but you can. And yes, if you're reminded of a particular Christmas song, I was too, but I'm not going to play. It's not Christmas and I don't, never learned it. Now, moving on. Step Slicer. Step Slicer 1. That's cool. Right. Trois Clairs. <laughs> It's all right, isn't it? <clears throat> so that's the end of that bank. Um, we move on from factory A to B A A X collection or B A X collection. Okay, that's called seventh stack sequence. So is it a sequence or is it just? It doesn't do anything. 12 string guitar. This is like the old SC88 guitar, which is actually all right. Too bad. Accelerate. It's a shepherd tone. I love those. What do I do with the presets that are set as fifths, asks Luke. I love them because you can play big fat chords. Maybe we'll come across one in our travels at some point. I don't know. Acoustic bass one. Oh, good. It's a walking jazz bass.
quite a nice walking, uh, quite a nice outright base. Yeah. Angel's Pad. That's another of these loud ones, I think. a log tree. <clears throat> we had a sound like that earlier in the essential collection, I'm pretty sure. So, clean guitar. Why does guitar need aftertouch like that? <laughs> Dreaming, Dreaming Box. Now, Dreaming Box is another great sound I have on the Phantom. It's good. Mod World does that. It's tremolo. Oh, that's nice. AX Fantasia. Another... That's closer than we've had all evening. Still not Fantasia, though. Fat... What's that? Fat Jar Lead. Tremolo EP. That's nice. Again, I could happily use this on stage, throw a bit of reverb on it. Flakes. Oh, after touch does that. <laughs> Very nice. Stage EP.
Yeah. Step beat. Again with the aftertouch there. And the non syncable thing. Really ridiculous. Thank you, Luke, for hitting the bell. Um, I do appreciate it. I hope you enjoy. I have a lot of stuff up here. Many, 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 many videos. Too many, I think. But never mind. Step slicer one. Yeah. Step slicer two. This is sounding familiar. I think I've been through some of these. Touch EP. Okay. Luke, if you liked the NI video, uh, go back, uh, I want to say three weeks, possibly four weeks, and watch the video I did on um, XL and Audio Addictive Drums, my favorite drum plugin, I think, or at least one of them of all time. That one is much, much fun. Another live stream like this in the same time slot, Saturdays, 2 p.m. UK time. I think I went for two, three hours on all my favorite um, addictive drums presets, because finger drumming is obviously another passion of mine, and I think you get a kick out of that video. It's great fun. Um, Z decimal, Z decimal. It moves around in such cool ways. Right, so that's that bank done. That is BAX collection. D basic synths. All right. Did I do this already? I don't think so. No, I did E, e um, XV collection. So this is basic synth and we have this some um, 80s EP. All right, then. So we need to play like. Something Vox LD4, lead for. Oh, yes. This sometimes is in my gigging template. This is a great sound. It's great, that is. Really good. Bell saw. LD1. It's a cool um, bell lead because there's a bell under it. But it's a monophonic sound, so that's kind of cool. saw LD4. It's a very um expressive crow. And D. Yeah. 
Did you lead one? A lot of good lead sounds. Roland aren't good at that. Did you lead two? This is the really weird sound. I remember using it once in a piece called, uh, I think it was called Take It Outside or something. And it's called um, Drumified. Listen to the delay when I hit a single key. stuff oh what is that the sphere what no it's a really weird name I can't say that oh nice you're from Wales but live in Japan what an interesting life you lead, sir. Luke Smith. Very interesting. Sorry, Luke Nightingale. Luke Smith is a keyboard player. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Great name, too. Luke Nightingale. It sounds like you should be a, like a, yeah, a, a, like an instrument maker. You should be making contact labs or something. Very cool. Metal PLS. All the live streams I do up here um, get saved to the channel. I don't delete them afterwards. I leave them up so people can rewatch them if they want. PLS Pad 1. That's nice. PLS Pad 10. <laughs> So interesting. Pad 11. The only thing I can say in Japanese is uh, Konnichiwa, hajimamashite, bokwa andrede. And that is the extent of my Japanese knowledge. Techno Poly 3. <laughs> The last live stream, by the way, two weeks ago, was uh, about Native Instruments, um, the new Rhodes plugins they released, the Tynes Duo, so it was Diamond and Phoenix. Some cool ones in there. Trance Staff. TG stack. Wow, you've been a world traveler there, Luke. Said so he left um, for he left for. Uh, Australia when he was 17 from Wales and then uh, moved to Japan last year at 34. Wow. I'd love to hear some of those stories. Um, what do you do? I mean, 
seems like you're a musician, you play something, you re- you've recorded instruments. I do a lot of audio and field recording as well. So, you know, capturing audio and field recordings from all these kind of places that I may never visit is always very interesting to me. That sounds really, really cool. I'd love to hear more about that sort of thing. Okay. Oh, I've pl- that's the end of that bank. Okay. So I've done the banks in the factory. So let's move on to... No, not the Excel wave expansions. Let's move on to model expansions and cover... Hang on. Okay, let's cover some of these model expansions. So let's start with the um, SH-100. Sorry, SH-101. And we first have this boot... A uh, bit crusher lead. After touch is doing all that. It's very fun. Okay, that's the only sound in that bank that I favorited. So let's go to the JD 800. Even though, actually. <laughs> Do you know the weird thing about this, right? The weird, weird thing about the JD800 expansion within Xenology is it's the only one of them, as far as I know, that has a reverb plugin built in. None of the other Xenology sounds do. So this one has reverb. They do, why did they do, I don't understand why they did that. Anyway, that was Asian Dream. And then we move on to other things. I'm gonna skip all of those purely because um, those are kind of expansions for expansions. Let's go to the wave expansions now. So stage piano one, this is nice. We have expressive plus EP1. that quiet piano plus strings trim stuff yeah luke contact me through my website i have a nice contact form and it basically hits my email so uh, if you want to do that that'd be lovely nice ah oh, it's the last one in that bank i was enjoying that so that was um zero zero one stage piano one let's go to zero zero two stage piano two and we go to ac piano re- rev delay which is the reverse delay this sound is lovely and the first time i played this srx board all right, let me explain a few things. The way that the EXP boards in Xenology work are they're renamed slash rebadged SRX boards, essentially. Some of them are not because they never made it into SRX form, but essentially a lot of these are. Um, so this second one is SRX 11, if memory serves. 
Yes, it is SRX11. And I bought SRX11 when I had a Juno G back in 2008. And I loved the SRX11 piano board sounds. They were fantastic. And they, again, stick with me as my younger years. So this sound is something, again, I tried to recreate in Logic using whatever sounds I could get hold of. Nothing else quite did it right. So when I got access to Roland Cloud, one of the first things I did, of course, was to find this sound. And favorite it. Actually, I don't think this is the right piano board, but we will find the other one later. This is a, this is, no, what this is, this is the actual um, Phantom XR piano that they put onto in the XP board. The other one is coming in another expansion board, but they obviously liked that reverse piano sound and put it in this um, EXP expansion. But it's all right. There are some still some great sounds in here. Delay E Piano 2. The trouble with this sound is that you have to play it very softly and very carefully because it's got a harsh layer and you can overhit it. So yeah, got to be careful. Ultimate Grand. Yes, this sound is in the Phantom XR, which is to my right to the right of my uh, keyboard here, and I have it still. It's actually turned on and powered on. And uh, this is the, one of the sounds from its uh, very extended piano, which is a very good piano for being in hardware, built into a unit. X Pure Grand, another sound from the Phantom built-in piano. Such fun. All right, Luke's gone to bed. Good night. It's been nice to talk to you. You've been the only one here for a long time, so I'm just going to carry on playing for myself, I suppose. It's late in Japan. It's late in Australia. But all my Aussies and UK peeps are not here, so I'll just play and talk to myself. I don't mind.
X Pure plus E Piano. Nice. Okay. Pure plus pad. Midi Man is here. Woo. I meant to actually message you, Mr. Midi Man, but um, by the time I uh, did that, I had already started and I was late. But I have played lots of fun things, including the D50 sounds I like. So you've got the intro to catch up on, which is quite fun. Yeah. So let's look at these um, EX uh, P4 power drums. And again, the drums in this are just not great. When you hear the studio drums, they're much better. And uh, these are... I know Roland can do better than these junky things. So that first one, I didn't tell you the name, by the way. So rubbish. It's just Power Tight Boy Kit. Oh, that's the only one I favorited in this whole... Honestly, if you heard these, you just wouldn't believe Roland could do any good drums at all. All right. Now we get to the studio sounds board and the kits here are much earlier on. They're from like 2001 or maybe 2000 or something. Maybe even 99, I don't know. But they're much better in tone and just playability. And I used to play these all the time. Um, I think, and I'm not 100% sure because it was so many years ago, but I think that the studio board was the first board I bought with my fan with my XV5050 in 2002. Um, because I could get that, the, the module and a board for, I think it was like 850 or something. It was a long time ago. I don't remember the full price. But I remember coming home with this thing and my mum was like, what have you bought? What have you done? But that thing lasted me years. I used it up until about 2007, 8. And uh, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it very much. See, these have actual um, layers. They sound good, the drums. Lots of lovely percussion elements. 
And uh, my favorite snare and uh, my favorite bass drum in these kits remains the G bass drum down there. sounds. That's what they should have been all along. So now we move on to Jazz Vel Oct, which is the jazz guitar velocity octave and you hit it soft. And when you hit it hard, It does that, which I like. Mr. Jazz. Ah, oh, it's the bass. Okay, so then we're going to get it. It's a good bass. The Oh Wow guitar. It's all right, that. Yes. Perk menu. So this is all about percussion and there's lots of good stuff in here. I'd be surprised if you... Yeah, there we go. Timbales. I'd be surprised if you didn't hear that in some things back in the day. Another drum kit um, of a similar bent as the previous. Nice, these. And these ones you can uh, play kind of general MIDI percussion. Toms, um, every other tom, and between those you have lambs on the toms, so you can. And on the E flat is very nice. You have a, a, a roll on the lower velocities, and when you hit it hard, a flam on the snare, so you can, you know. Studio 3 kit, different type of snare. It's good. Taxi EP, one of the best EPs Roland ever made, ever, in the history of ever. Yeah, so um, I took a week off last week, Andrew, just if you didn't know, because I didn't know what to do. And I thought, you know what, I want to cover Roland Cloud one of these weeks, so I'm doing that today. And uh, you had some suggestions for me, I believe. You wanted me to cover some of the Arturia plugins. I think it was the Synchrevia and the CMI, so um, that's on the to-do list as well.
This is such a good on stage road. It's just so warm. Let me show you the bottom end as well. Right, so we move on from that to World Instruments Bank 6. And we have Asia Menu. Now, there are some funny things in here, if memory serves. Yeah, there we go. Asian man shouting in a bathroom. And that. Great big gongs. I love these drums. I'm not sure what they're actually called. But they're so cool. I want to see one in person. And those little kind of hand symbol things. They're awesome. And these. What are these? Lots of fun noises. Oh, okay, so you have a compressed baby bass, which is rather cool. last thing in this list wow that's sad i know there are lots and lots and lots more sounds in this bank that are fantastic but i think i am still going through some of these to remind myself of what there is and again i would have loved to show you more of the actual srx sounds because they are better quality because they have the real effects on them but because of the nature of the clicky clacky uh, poppy issues that we faced earlier i don't want to do that if Roland ever pulled their finger out and fixed these plugins, I could do a revisitation stream at some point. In the meantime, let's move on to uh, Orchestra Bank, which is 007 Orchestra, and show you this or Orch kit. Lots of orchestra noises. I love these. This is a bank that's in my Phantom as well, and it's just absolutely fantastic. The orchestra stuff in here, despite being from the 90s, is just still some of the best in hardware, in my opinion. And it is just my opinion. But for an expansion board to have such great sounds is just lovely. And yeah, I remember your Christmas album, Andrew. It was very good. A load of cool stuff in there. And oh, man. A lot of these sounds, by the way, come from SRJV boards, which are even older than SRX boards, and therefore they come from the 90s, right? Last century. These are ancient sounds, but they still, still can stand up to this day. Basically, Roland just did a fantastic job when they recorded them. Yes, they're all mono and they're old, but that doesn't matter. If the sound is good, it's good, you know? I'd love to know what orchestra they asked to do those things. <laughs> oh yeah, one of my favorite sounds. Just, just that, it's great. Oh yeah, these lovely harp runs. So soft and beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love that. 
Just so good. Ancient Times. Touch makes it bend in funny ways. <laughs> Big strings too. Yeah, the strings in this board are just some of the beautifulest, I think. They didn't do anything useful with the mod wheel, they just made it very bad vibrato, which is a shame. Desert Dream, lovely. I always thought it was very funny that this sound made it onto this board and not the keys board, because it's very fitting for that. It's strange that it's on here. It's fine, I like it, but it's just interesting. Dyna Timps SRX. Yeah, these Timps for being old aren't bad. You know, they're old and mono, but they're okay. This is a GM assigned kit, so it's an orchestral kit in the GM layout. Okay, someone assigned something where they shouldn't. That's really funny. I never noticed this, but the whistle and the bass drum apparently are in the same mute group. So you can't play those two things together. I don't know how someone didn't catch that. <laughs> how long has that been like that? It's probably hundreds of years. Anyway, <laughs> that tickles me funny bone, it's stupid. Anyway, once upon a, not once upon a time, just once upon a. I'm really curious to know whether the actual SRX board, the SRX 6, does that same issue with the GM assign kit. I'm going to have to check that now. It's going to bug me if I don't. So when I finish the stream, I may load up the Phantom version of that same kit and see if the bass drum and whistle are assigned like that, or if that's a bug that only carried over to the Roland Cloud version, because that is just too silly. I'm amused, so amused. <laughs> Okay, TP4. <laughs> Big brass balls. That's the end of that bank, actually. So let's move on to 
vintage keys. Now we heard we heard this board is an SRX board earlier than some of the favorites from that. And the vintage keys over there, of course, had reverb, but we know about reverb on the Xenology. We know it doesn't exist properly, so we have to just. Still a great sound, and without the clicky poppy, I'm happy. This one is H2O. That's rather big, isn't it? <laughs> Housing bass SRX. Yes, this is the one I was telling you about earlier with the, except it clicked and crackled on the other sound, but this is. There's just something about this sound. Nothing else I've been able to, I tried to emulate it as I said in Logic uh, stock sounds. I couldn't do it. It's very annoying. And again, the sinusoidal SRX. Now, this one is playable because it's not cal actually drowned in reverb. This is one time where the reverb actually did it a, dis a disservice with this sound. Now, you can mess this sound up, I remember, even on the hardware, if you play a low. Oh, it doesn't do it here. It doesn't actually do it on this sound. Maybe because they reworked the portamento. Um, I think on the actual SRX sound, it does mess up. If you play a low note and a high note, it uh, cannot play it because it is keeping the same sound triggered. Um, oh dear. Oh, sleepy. And therefore it doesn't re-trigger properly. But here, it does something different. So the portamento has been reworked in technology, so you can. But you can't do that on the original hardware. If I feel brave enough and it doesn't crash, I will try to go back to the SRX one at the end, if I get reminded, and show you what happens. <laughs> because it does it on the hardware too. It's very silly. Suitcase EP. Mod will actually give us some trim. Well, kind of auto panner actually. It's all right, that. Touch EP SRX. After touch EP. So actually, what I was thinking about the Xenology thing is that the um, Portamento was not true to the real SRX, to the real SRX version. So it's it's a shame that they broke it. They fixed something, but they broke the thing at the same time because they should have left it alone. Because it, it it does make the sound kind of better, but at the same time, it was that kind of authentic weirdness that made the sound what it was. And that's the VCO WAP again. And that's the end of that bank. Uh, but there are more. Symphonic string that I favorited a few in here. This one is called Daybreak Ends. FST, what's that? FST RSW.
this was SRX4, by the way, back in the day, symphonic strings. And I never knew anybody that had this in their um, keyboards or phantoms, not in the real hardware. So it's nice to be able to actually experience this stuff for myself um, in software because I didn't ever own these or own this particular board. So that's kind of cool. I owned SRX6 instead, which is the one we just came from earlier. Oh, Trem. Trem SW. That's good. Nice, that. Grand Unison. Harp Strings Pad. Okay, so Miniman has that board. So what boards have you got in your your Phantom then? And also you've got the XV, don't you? So you've got more room for more boards. I did not realize you had that board. Interesting. Because in my Phantom, of course, there's six slots, as you know. And I have SRX 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9. Um, and when I had the Juno, I had SRX 11 in the Juno as well. So I had, at one time, seven SRX boards out of 12. So that's pretty good. Lush Strings 2. Now, if you ask me, which you didn't, but I think Roland do some of the best strings in the business still, hardware-wise. I think they were great. I think they supersede Korg and Yamaha in most cases. Ripple. I use that sound in a short, one of my short tracks, and I think it's short number one, uh, 116, possibly, or maybe 119, something like that. It's a cool sound. And I used it in the FA06, which you can load software versions of these boards into the Roland FA06 keyboard that I had. So you, you play a note. And it does that. And then you release the key and it goes ding. It's really cool. <laughs> it's very different. Very unusual, but very cool. So swell. I don't know why, but I'm reminded of late at night and there's a train passing outside the window and it's the countryside. And I don't know why that one chord just hit me in a particular way. It was just a very specific feeling. It's very strange. Maybe because it comes and goes like a train in the night. Um, this whole sound actually does that for me. I like it, which is why it's in my favorites. Uh, yeah. STR, GNS, and HRNS2. Okay, so strings and horns too. Decipher the little tiny characters. strings. Aft 
to that strikes again. Trem. Deep something. Oh, it's lucky. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yes. So it's like a tremolo of strings with a crescendo. Uh, yeah. I think I use that sound as well somewhere. Far sequence. Oh, no. Var sequence. Okay. This might be like a violin thing. that bank all right moving to zero one zero big brass ensemble I like these I wonder where they recorded them their stereo Ooh. love that now, what I wish Roland had done, I mean, I understand why they didn't, is to set stops for where the sound ends. Because some of these times you don't know where the sound actually starts and stops. Oh, wow. I only took these two from this bank. This one and this one. So that's the trumpet. Sec rip. That's good. Maybe I ferreted more in the, um, what do you call it? In the SRX version. I'm not sure. All right, so we move on to the EPs. This is Amped EP1. And as I said earlier, uh, for those of you who were here, which wasn't many of you, is that the keys board doesn't matter if there's no reverb attached because you can BYOR, bring your own reverb. Um, I'm not going to do that today. But these sounds don't really require much work, so they can, they can stand on their own. EP2. Lovely chorus without the clicks and pops like we heard earlier. It's very nice. I can enjoy that. DP. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, it's chorus EP1, I think, again, but it's a different. It's a DP chorus EP1. Is it like stacked together two, two EPs? Nice. I am a fan. DP Cho EP2. Notice these cap like a kind of key release type noise. This is a board I did not own in my Phantom. This is SRX 11, uh, sorry, 12. If you try to find these boards on uh, eBay or something, they cost a lot of money. So you're lucky if you can find them at all. Phaser EP1, I don't think I said. This is a lovely phaser though. This, this phaser is just lovely.
Pure EP2. Yeah, this is another good one. <laughs> What I find about this is it's it's quite rich and it would stand out on stage if I were to use it on stage. It's just it's also very staccato-y and for me I like that kind of sound in a in a rose or a piano. I like that you can just take your finger off the key and it's gone. There's no waiting around for the thing to return. It's so quick. Okay, Stremolo, uh, Stereo Trem EP. Lovely, this one. EP2, Stereo Trem EP2. Oh, that's the, that's the last of that. Okay. Right, right, right. Dance tracks. So we now we have some of these repeats. And this is the beat menu one again. I'm going to skip some of these because these, I have a feeling, will get me in some trouble. Purely because the nature of the way that these work is that a lot of people have used them in actual tracks. <clears throat> and I'm not going to be paying Sony or BMG Music or UMG, whatever it is, for, for rights to play keys or press buttons on a keyboard. I'm not doing that. However, this Melotrem SRX is not a beat or a drum, so I can play it. Good stuff. Whoa. Andrew has a bunch of boards in his NYC Club SRX. But he didn't tell me in order, so I can't I can't pause that data because it's not in order. So he has. Okay, I just read this by I need to read it like character word by word. So he's got Oh, he's put no spaces and commas. Oh, gosh. Okay. He's got 07, 03, 05, 04, 02, 06. Okay. So a lot of what I have and some differences, like, for example, 04 and 02. I don't have 04 and 02 or 02 and 04 in mine. Okay. So. Oh, what did I, did I tell you? NYC Club SRX. This is a great sound as well. I've used this in a track called Dirty Grooves. I really like this sound. It's very simple, but very nice. Ooh, Aftertouch takes away the effect. Maybe I did know that, but I don't remember knowing that. Solo Sin SRX 2. I think this is based on the solo sinusoidal, uh, sinusoidal, uh, sinusoidal SRX from SRX7 um, because it says SRX2 as if it's like a, a subsequent version, which is nice. It's 
a very good solo sound and I will be using it because I forgot it was here. Good happy days. Sub bass. There's nothing particularly special about that. It's not bad nor good, but you know, there are other things that do that. Tune Breath SRX. Yes, I used this sound in a track called The Last Stand years ago. It's very, very cold seeming. There's something about that sound. It's just really freezing. Which I like it. It's just really, really cold. <laughs> okay, so you've got six in the XV as well as six in the Phantom. So if you've got some duplications there. And ten. Oh, you've got ten, the brass board in the in the J V in the XV. Very nice. And I admit, I don't know what the SRJV boards correlate to because JVs tend to be two SRX boards in one. And I don't know the JV as well as the other stuff. Oh. DJ. So those are the Vox menus, which we went through before. So I'm not going to do that again. Listen to the earlier part of the stream if you're curious. Okay, now let's play the 013 concert grand piano. Right, so um, a few things. EXP1 that we touched on earlier. Um, I don't know where that piano comes from. And this is another one. I don't know where this piano comes from. It was not ever released as an SRX board. Actually, wait, this one might be SRX2. Yes, this might actually be the sounds from SRX2, which is a board I did not own. So yeah, the, but the SRX, the EXP1... Um, I'm not sure where those sounds come from. We know the EXP2 is the inbuilt Phantom piano because the names of the patches make sense, Ultimate Grand and stuff like that. But I don't know where this is. Uh, the ESU one is. This is Bright Grand and it's uh, bright. I didn't own SRX2, so for me, I'm not familiar enough with these sounds to say that this was SRX2. Comp piano, and it's mono too, which is nice. Concert Hall. rich actually this piano i wouldn't have minded it if i had owned it but when i heard the demos i didn't like them of srx2 so i got srx11 instead on mic premiere <laughs> i think i found that it was too classical for my taste so i didn't buy it But it's actually not as bad as I remember it. A lot of things happen like that. When you have demos and you hear other people playing the thing, it's not always what you think it is. And then you get it and you enjoy it more than you thought you would.
That's all right. Premier Grand. PDR grand, so that means there's a pad under it. Platinum tracks, yes, that's a good board. He said, Midi Man has that, it's good. So that's the end of that band, uh, bank, which I, I really don't mind this. I think I'm going to play it more often. Complete piano, all right. Right, this one is the SRX 11 that I did own. I guarantee you that I know that sound immediately. It's a very distinctive sound. It's classic grand. Darker side, yes, this is nice. Um. Dynamic Grand. You know, I've never felt an SRJB board because I don't know what they look like. I know what an SRX board looks like. It's connected with an L-shaped thingy on it. But I don't know what an SRJB board looks like. Maybe if I found one for like three pounds, I'll buy one one day. Because I'm really curious. Just really curious. Dynamic Grand. Right, so, I'm annoyed. I need to find the reverse and favorite it because I wanted to show you that sound. It's very good in here. So, I'm going to hunt it down. Well, that's one of them. Meditate. This is lovely. Yeah, this is the reverse that they have in this board and that I just fell in love with when I started playing it on the Juno G years ago. I love that. That's just such a great sound. That's the sound I wanted to find. It's so good. Makes me happy. 
And let's go to 015 Vintage Synth, which is the last of the banks that I have available. Ah, housing base again. Hey, how do you appear again? Oh well. That's the only sound I favorited here. That's interesting. Now, we know that that sound is also in the keys bank earlier on. So how did that occur? I'm intrigued. But you know what? I think there are no more banks. Ooh. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. How did that happen? Everything's gone weird. Um. It's it's lost my um, look at the world. It's it's just gone crazy. Synology is no longer set to what it should have been. Okay, I've got it back now. So, can you behave here? Right. Okay. But as it turns out, yeah, I am actually out of all the weird things I wanted to show you, which is a shame. So I'm gonna do something that I probably shouldn't because I things are going to fall over but we're going to try I'm going to aim and show you some of the SRX things that I have favorited because I really want to um, and on the world board in particular I know I went through loads I'm going to hit the select button if it crashes you know why all right it didn't crash but it does mean that it's going to click and crackle a bit because the fact that Roland haven't optimized these plugins very well but I want to show you enough stop. That's what the sound is called. So you have lots of different aspects of this sound. Yes, um, it's called enough stop for a reason. Yes, there's this, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. There's a whole section of this weird accordion thing that goes on and just hangs out. Right. So that's one part of the thing. And you have this organ at the top. And then you have a scream because enough stop. And below that, <laughs> kind of speaks for itself yeah enough stop <laughs> oh gosh absolutely ridiculous oh dear is that the only thing i favorited in this in that board because yeah there's lots of silly things there so that's world um i am going to dare and try and show you some of these piano board boards things so srx piano 2 is um this is srx 11 piano and i've got more favorites here than i did in the other one so that's dark ballad meditate as we heard but this one with reverb this time so much more definition if you do it this way I love that. And Andrew has listed all of his stuff in the chat. So those of you watching the re live replay, you'll have a good time. He's got a lot of cool stuff there. That's called Pentadura, so it's uh, fifths. OBS has come up with notifications, and I don't know why. So let me deal with that. Why? Hello? All right, fair enough. Why have you come up with that now? Right. Did the stream just quit on me or something? Is that why? If so, fair enough. Maybe my internet dropped out. Ah, oh, bass and drums. He's got bass and drums. It's good stuff. This one 
it's perfect ground and it's really nice. And what I like about it, again, it's the fact that it has reverb. I don't like the fact that it clicks and pops at me, but it's a nice piano nonetheless. And when I bought this board uh, for, I think, £200 back in the day um, from a, oh, a music store in London called Turnkey that went bankrupt soon after I bought from them. <laughs> I think they were going bankrupt as I was buying from them, and I was like, I've spent my money with you. I hope I get my uh, item. They did ship it. Luckily, I did. But I was concerned that I wouldn't. But it was fine. But anyway, I bought from them and I got this board. I installed it in my Juno G and I loved it. And I was like, wow, I'd never heard such cool pianos and piece of hardware before. And it blew my mind. Yay. So what I would say, all right, basically as a conclusion to this stream because i've gone on for ages is if you're going to get anything to do with rolling cloud um try out what you can and see what you like it's a subscription service yeah a lot of people don't like those sing us a song by the way is what this is called i'm not going to sing for you because i don't sing but i can play And again, it's not your stream that's broken. It's Roland's plugins because they're really, really bad. And he's pasting um, clips, clips from his uh, pictures, from I think from his SRX rack, which is nice. I'll have a look at those after the stream is done very soon. So, Media Man says that the JB boards are not quite twice the size of SRX boards. They're the previous generation to the SRX boards that don't know. Yes, do they have that same kind of L connector thing as well as the SRX boards do? And if you have any board to hand or can remember, are there anything written on the chips of SRX boards? Because I always wanted someone to do a teardown of one of these boards. Like, is it just one blob ROM chip with all the stuff on it? Or is it different circuit boards that meld into one? Because I want to know what Roland did to get those sounds into such a small space. They're all 64 megabytes. JV, SRJV boards are 16 megs. And SRX are 64 megs. And I've always, always been curious and nosy about what's actually written on those chips. But it's because, um, you know, I have them to hand, but I don't want to take one out to do that with it. But someone somewhere probably has cool schematics of these things. There was a hiccup, but I'm back. Okay, so it did drop out. I guess it came back on its own. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. I didn't know if it would reconnect. It's possible my internet had a bit of a moment, but anyway. Basically, I'm done here because I've been going for a long time anyway. I'm going to just play you through the rest of these particular piano, this piano board, which is superb grand. This is nice too. And Mitchell asked earlier if I had ever messed with the um, velocity curve on the complete control keyboard. And the answer is no, because I don't like to do that, because getting it back is really annoying. You have to go into a menu and you turn the knob until it lines up again. But that's kind of irritating, so I don't bother. So yeah, these things have a lot to say for themselves, you know, and I, I do like them. Superior Grand, this is also very nice. I remember this. I really need to get hold of someone at Roland because they really need to fix this stuff for Mac. It's not acceptable that we pay all this money and this is the kind of click and crackle we have. And it's only Roland plugins that do it. And I have ones that even sound worse than this. If I load up, I think it's one of the Promas or one of the Jupiters. It literally is the worst thing you've ever heard. It should not do it. It should not do it. It's bad. I don't know, man. But anyway. But 
yeah, this piano was in soft in hardware to think about it one time. Just to think like a piano like that. Um, it's it's fine these days. You think about it. You don't you don't think about it. But you know when you would put a piece of circuitry in your your keyboard or your module and get a sound like that out of it, it just felt absolutely magical. It felt like you were getting a whole new um, piece of equipment, which you were because it was expensive and you were fitting it to your existing stuff. But the sounds that you'd played for years in your existing sound module or keyboard could have upgrades. And that felt magical. This is superior strings, by the way. Nowadays, we can take it for granted. You buy a new plugin, and that's it. You've done it, you know? There's nothing to it. I mean, you spent the money, and you download the thing, and it's just there. But back in the day, when you'd have to take the thing apart, put this in, press that in, click that, screw that down, it was a whole different story. So when you did it, it felt like you'd spend more time with that thing. Now you can buy three or, you know, 60 plugins in a day and uh, not spend time with any of them. And uh, it's a shame. This is Superior Pad 2, and it's nice. <laughs> Wide Stereo Grand. So, number one, when is Roland going to fix these plugins? And number two, why does Xenology not have reverb for most plugins? I wish I knew the answer to these questions, but alas, I do not. So, I'm just going to leave it there. But I'd like you to think about that. And if you are able to shout loud enough, then maybe you can get Roland to sort things out. So Andrew, you've had no issue with these. Yeah, this is a particularly a Mac thing. It's not a Windows thing. It's a Mac thing. And they just haven't done enough QC and testing. And it's very, very irritating. And yeah, combining waveforms between the two boards would be really nice. I don't see why you can't do that. It doesn't make sense. They need to do way more things that you could do there. And he says that there are combinations of sounds that you can only make in hardware. And he's correct. The only way to do it is to um, stack your tracks, which we can do, but it's more resource intensive and there's no reason to do that. And increasing the sound buffer doesn't help. I have tried. It is specifically a Roland issue because these issues don't happen with way bigger plugins. For example, if I run, you know, Spitfire's BBC Symphony Orchestra, which is 600 gigabytes, right? It's a massive sample orchestra. These are just things that you play back. They're romplers. Each of these SRX boards is essentially its own rompler, right? It's really poor CPU management or something. But I can run BBC Symphony Orchestra or some of the big project SAM libraries or a massive sample piano from Contact, and it does not glitch once during an entire live stream. These are really badly coded for Mac, and I don't understand it. And the thing is, Xenology doesn't do it. It's just the SRX boards that do it. So somewhere, some kind of Cody team just didn't do their homework, and it really pisses me off. It should not be the case. It should not be the case at all. But anyway, I'm going to hit this and uh, say that I've enjoyed the stream. It's been good fun. And uh, yeah, the usual time. End the stream type thing. But yeah, look, it's been good. It's 20 to 6. No, it's not. It's 10 to, 10 to 6, nearly. So again, another four hours and some stream. Got there in the end. No, sorry, three hours and change. Anyway, long enough. Long enough. I appreciate you all, and uh, I don't know what we'll cover next time, but we'll, we'll find something. Leave your thoughts in the comments below if you're interested in uh, hearing more from me, and uh, hopefully plugins that don't crash the system. I mean, the last two streams I've done, we've had a crash, and uh, this one has clicky poppy issues. Roll and sort your crap out. Very annoying. Sort it out. Thanks. Thank you very much. And if you, if you do feel inclined, press the join button on YouTube because it does help. 
Um, it allows me to buy more plugins, fund more stuff, do more things for you guys. Because, hey, I'm a one-man operation, you know? I don't have a big team behind me. It's just me and me alone. Or there's Patreon if you want to do that as well. If you don't want to do one of those things, that's fine. Enjoy the stuff. Um, go and spend the money on plugins that I demo for you instead of giving me money. <laughs> that's fine too. But yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Right? I'm going to head out and leave you in peace. Or pieces. Whichever. I probably won't be around next week and I likely won't be around the week after because I'm in Belgium for a holiday so I may be back the week after that but if I do something next week then I'll repeat the same message at that time till then I'm out <laughs> <laughs>